In this video, I'm going to give an update on how my video production slash music production computer build has worked out for me in the past year or so. So it's been a little over a year since I built this computer. I know that the original video hadn't come out um, a year ago, but uh, it took me a while to get that video out. If you haven't seen the original video, I go through all of um, my decisions in choosing the parts and what it, the process was like. I'll leave a link here to check that out if you haven't yet. But in this video, I'm going to talk about things that I wish I would have done initially or I just decided to do later on. So I'm going to talk about these in order of changes that I made to the computer over the past year. So the first thing I want to talk about is the RAM. I don't regret buying the RAM that I bought, but I ran into an issue that was disappointing. Uh, when I was trying to overclock the RAM, which the speed that the RAM was rated at was overclock speed. So I had to go into the BIOS to overclock it to get that speed. Otherwise, it was, I believe, 24 was what it came out of the box, and then overclock was 3200. I chose that RAM for that speed, and I wanted to take advantage of that. But then when I did overclock the RAM, I was having random shutdowns. Now, I, I don't know why I tried to bring it to, like, a halfway point where it wasn't fully overclocked, but it was just a little bit faster than the speed that it came out of the box, but the computer was just randomly turning off. If someone knows, can explain this, uh, please leave a comment and, and help me out here because I would love to hear what the issue actually was. From my research, it just seemed like it was overloading the computer and then t turning it off. I know that that's an issue with overclocking in general, but I thought RAM is a pretty safe bet. And I, from what I researched, it didn't seem like there would be any type of issues like that. But as I slowly slow down the RAM, the issue happened less and less until I just completely set it back to the original speed it was out of the box and the issue stopped and I haven't had the issue since. That was like the first month, you know, first week I had the computer running. After I changed that back, I hadn't have I haven't had a single issue. It has never shut off on me in the past year. So that clearly was the cause of it. I don't know what I could have done to take advantage of that speed, but I'm currently just using the 24, um, 2,400 megahertz speed. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, looked at that stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's running fine. I, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't able to use the higher speed enough to really be able to tell you if there was a performance difference. I mean, this computer is so much faster than anything I've ever used that I just accepted it. I am happy with my decision. I just wish I could have taken advantage of, the, of that. If I upgrade my motherboard, that might help. So that's something in the future. Right now, I'm completely happy with where I'm at speed-wise. I'm thinking that when I decide that I want to start upgrading more, I will go ahead and upgrade the motherboard and then maybe get another 32 gigs of the same exact RAM, and hopefully that motherboard will be able to allow me to overclock that RAM speed and really take advantage of that extra overclocking. Now, the second issue that I ran into was I was trying to uh, cheap out a little bit and use an old router for my Wi-Fi card. Now, this worked, I, I got it to work, but then it would cut out and I would have to go through the whole process of setting it up multiple times. And like any time I moved it or whatever, it was always um, kind of a hassle to get it set up again. And I eventually just figured this isn't worth it. I just bought a wireless router that goes directly into the motherboard. It was 35 bucks and it, it, I haven't had any complaints with speed. I don't really do many much gaming. So if you're doing gaming, yeah, you want to be hooked up more for consistency. The speed is fine, but you just want to consistently have that connection. But for all the things that I need uh, the internet for, the wireless router is working fantastic for. 
So for me to jump up to a motherboard with a wireless router wouldn't have been worth it. So I don't regret any of that. And I think it still worked out in the end. Again, the motherboard is probably going to be the first thing I would want to upgrade because of the first issue I was having with the RAM. Plus, maybe I could just get wireless built in, but I already have the wireless router now, so I guess it doesn't matter. And for my last issue, well, I guess it's not really an issue, I just upgraded it, is the storage. So even though I planned ahead and I thought I was going above and beyond with storage, as any video editor will tell you, storage, you never have enough. So I had to upgrade the storage. I have a 500 gig M.2 and I have a one terabyte M.2. And I was only using the 500 gig for operating system and programs. And the, the one terabyte I was using for everything else. So uh, video files, the, the cache, scratch folders, like all of that kind of stuff. And then the software, Premiere Pro, was running on the 500 gig hard drive. Now, I decided to just not get a solid state drive and just go for as much, uh, a lot more storage. So I got a two terabyte hard drive. Now this hard drive is rated at 7,200 RPM. That's the fastest you can get in hard drive form. And I'm just using it as like, okay, when I project is being worked on, I'm running it on the M.2, and then after I'm done with it, I'll just move it over to the normal hard drive. I also moved my cache and scratch folder onto the hard drive, which is basically giving me optimal performance st storage-wise. Now, if that hard drive was M.2, yeah, it would be even faster, but the fact that I'm running my software on one hard drive that's with my OS, and then I'm running my actual program files on one hard drive, the other M.2, and then I'm running my cache and scratch on a separate hard drive, which is giving the computer more, more alleyways to run data through, giving me optimal performance for video editing, music production, whatever. So the Intel processor has been good. It hasn't given me any issues and I'm happy with it, uh, especially because I just haven't used a computer this powerful before. So I, it's hard for me to complain about anything. But if I were to do this again, I probably wouldn't have gone with the Intel and I would have paid a little extra due to the fact that the Intel is using a SLC cache system, which slows it down at a certain point, which I did know this going in, but basically I put a, a 750 gig cap on the hard drive just because I didn't want to fill it up too much because I knew it was going to slow down a lot. And at that point, it's not really a one terabyte anymore, is it, right? It's 750 gig. And I probably would have just paid a little extra and got one that didn't use an SLC cache and just not have to worry about that and have it perform better or just get a normal solid state. It doesn't have to be an M.2. I just feel like that M.2 slot could be put to better use than a solid state M.2 that uses an SLC cache. I would have just gone with a different one from the start. But at the same time, it's been working great and I, I'm not gonna replace it anytime soon. So other than those three things, the computer's running great and I plan to keep it that way for quite a while. Maybe I'll do another video in a in a year and we can see how, uh, how it's running then. For now, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like maybe even a subscribe, you know, and see, see what you think. Uh, I appreciate any support you guys can offer and I'll see you in the next one.